All right, everyone. Welcome back. Um, yes, again, I'm Eli, just in case you've forgotten that amount of time. And uh, what I'm going to be sharing with you tonight is um, the technology of the student experience. Now, just like Alex said, um, especially in the situation that we're all dealing with, many universities panicked and were reactionary, uh, and they went out to choose technology, trying to figure out how instructors could deliver their courses in a hurry and what tools were available, whereas- And Eli, sorry to interrupt, but speaking no. of technology, do you want people to configure their Zoom in any particular way? Absolutely, this? yep, yep, we're, gonna, we're, we're going to that right now. Awesome. So, yep, thanks, Alex, thanks a lot. So um, just like Alex just uh, prompted, what we're focusing on here is the student experience. So all of the tools and the technology that we have available have been built into our uh, teaching and learning experience and so all of the things that you're going to see, uh, I want you to keep in mind how we have recreated the traditional face-to-face -face learning experience through technology. All right. So as Alex mentioned, um, what we're going to do now, I want you to, as much as possible, uh, get a taste of the student experience. So I want to show you, if you're on laptops, how to configure your screens so that you can see what the students see when they're participating in ACL, uh, American Collegiate Live. So in your Zoom settings, what you're gonna do is go up to the top where it says View Options, okay? And you're going to uh, select that. And then you're going to select Side-by-Side -side Mode. Okay, Side-by-Side -side Mode. Once you do this, then your screen is going to uh, be split. Half of your screen will be the slides, and half of your screen will have all of the wonderful participants that uh, I get to see right now. So in order to fix this, you're going to go up to the top and select speaker view, okay? Speaker view right up there at the top. And by doing that, because I am speaking, what you're going to do is you're going to get a screen that looks like this, where half are the PowerPoint slides, and the other half is me speaking, <laughs> okay? So um, once I'll give everyone just a moment to do that. And so uh, by dividing up your screen in this way, uh, you're getting more about what the, ex what the students experience while they're participating in our program. And uh, it will become much more clear later through my demonstration of why we have students uh, arrange their screens like this. All right, I'll begin in 10 seconds. Three, two, one. All right. So we are back now <laughs> to, um, oh, this is a, a Zoom markup here. Uh, the technology of the student experience here. And uh, our challenge, how do we uh, deliver engaging, interactive, and high quality lectures to students anywhere? So uh, we do this by meeting three main challenges. And those challenges are here. Sorry. Those challenges are here, our three main components, the studio, software, and uCommons. What I'm going to be doing now is giving you a, a brief walkthrough of the studio, uh, giving you a tour of that experience. And then what we'll do from there is uh, I'll share some information with you about the software, and then finally, uCommons, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, walk over this way. And what I'm showing you here is the uh, control board. The control board is a 55 inch touch screen interface. It is the first um, choice that instructors have to select what content is being sent out to students. Anything that supports the curriculum, okay? Uh, they can send out video, audio, and in this situation, I am sending out PowerPoint slides which are coming out over the data channel and popping up here on the data board behind me. And for you, hopefully on your, the left side of your screens, if you have it in side-by-side -side mode. So um, all instructors are used to PowerPoint. The great thing about this for instructors is that you're able to annotate your slides. And as you can see there, I have a self-portrait of myself. And instructors don't have to worry about where they are standing. Um, uh, the information will always be clearly seen uh, by students on the other side just by looking 
on the left side of your screen. So instructors are able to annotate their slides and their PowerPoints. And then at the end of the lecture, these slides can be uploaded to the platform as notes for students, okay? So that's an extra bonus for students, uh, depending on the policies of the institution and the department, of course. Where I'm standing here is our teaching podium. There's a lot of technology available here as well. We have another touch screen interface that mimics everything that we can do on the control board, plus a little bit more, because it is here that the instructor is able to uh, interact with the learning management system, look at uh, student attendance, the roster, grades, questions, submissions, anything like that, everything that instructors want to have at a, at a glance. And as well, they have the ability to connect any device here, laptops, mobile phones, tablet computers, and there's microphones all around the studio environment, which makes sure that you're able to clearly hear me. And most importantly, instructors are able to walk in and teach naturally to their natural style and cadence. They don't have to worry about training. How do I teach in this studio? Instead, they just come in and teach, which is our philosophy, walk in and teach. So there's lots of technology here, but none of it gets in the way of the teaching experience. Okay. Now, the next part I'm going to share with you is the software and you Commons. Now, the software, of course, we are all connected to Zoom, and you have probably uh, arranged your screen in this way. Again, I don't want you to think of this as teaching with Zoom, okay? Uh, Zoom is uh, one of the software that we have chosen. We have uh, been able to survey many different applications and choose those that help us recreate the experience for students to minimize the sense of distance and to connect students and instructors no matter where they are. And Zoom is just one of these uh, choices and it allows us to deliver our content and that's it. Zoom uh, is paired with Sketch which is our uh, interactive whiteboard software. And what this does, it connects students to the instructor here in the studio and also connects students together. So what we have done is recreated the experience where an instructor can see you, call on you, and ask you to come up to the board and complete something. Now, of course, this happens from the comfort of perhaps your own living room, but again, I want you to focus on the experiences that have been recreated through these technical capabilities. And finally, you Commons. If you were a participant in our program, you would be able to log into you Commons. And I'm going to give you a peek of what this looks like from the student point of view. And again, this is just a peek behind the curtain. So I'm going to disappear here for a moment. It's not necessarily what we do during regular live lectures. So students would be able to log in uh, to the platform. They have their photo there on the left with some information, their last assignment submitted, upcoming assignments as a reminder. Uh, here in the center, this is their upcoming live lecture, the title of the live lecture, instructor, and other information. Uh, down here, they have a list of office hours where they're able to connect with instructors over Zoom or other third-party software and students would join the live lecture by clicking on this button. Now they're on the parking page for that individual lecture of that course. Here they will have a list of resources that are important for that lecture selected by the instructor, reminders of assignments that they need to do before the next class meeting, and then up here in the right hand corner, the raise hand button. And what I want to um, mention about this raise hand button is it allows for students, when they have questions, to get the instructor's attention. You get that. But what happens is that actually pops up here in the studio. Because what I'm looking at is a nice, large 55-inch prompter, uh, one that was specifically built for our uses. It's probably one of the largest prompters in existence. And so when any student clicks that button, it pops up a tile here in the studio, and the instructor can see that students have questions, um, and, but remains in control of the lecture. The instructor gets to choose when they're gonna take a pause and then accept those questions. 
As well, for those tiles, there's a little bit of information that's very useful. So let me share that with you. Their instructor has a view in the prompter, and I'm gonna let you look over my right shoulder here, right over my head <laughs> into the prompter, and you might be able to see yourselves there all in the screens. And at the bottom corner here, you're able to see these tiles. And what these tiles are, this is information <laughs> about the students. So at a glance, while I'm lecturing, I'm able to see, oh, Hank has a question. It gives me his profile photo and some information about him, how he's, uh, how he's doing in the class. Uh, how was his last, uh, his, his, his accumulative uh, participation score, his grades and a glance. At, uh, we're able to also include uh, his name and the phonetic pronunciation of his name so that instructors can get more familiar with students no matter where they're from or if they're uh, familiar with pronouncing names in that region. And so here in the studio, once I click that tile, from here, we come to here where the student pops up and um, fills up the entire screen for me. And so what that means is I'm able to have a more face-to-face -face conversation with this student. The student asks questions. And of course, all of the other participants in speaker view, you see that student pop up as well. But what that does is while I am looking at the student or while I'm looking at the whole class, for example, I see everyone here from Kate to Carla Altman to Stanley Harsha, who's looking very serious right now. He's paying attention to me. Thank you, Stan. So um, what happens is I'm able to maintain eye contact while I'm looking at the entire class. And this view, no matter the number of students, has a carousel function where it rotates. So um, I'm able to see all of the students regularly while maintaining eye contact. So for each individual out there, I hope what it feels from your point of view is that I'm speaking directly to you, that I can see you. Uh, during our normal live lecture, you wouldn't be muted, so I could hear you as well. And that has a psychological effect that we've seen over the last three years where students are actively engaged, more motivated during their class lectures as reported by their instructors. And it has that sense of a uh, continuous presence of the instructor being connected with students. Again, minimizing that sense of distance and recreating the experience that students have in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom. One more point on this I wanted to mention is that while calling on a student, I'm able to speak to that student and maintain eye contact. And again, this is something that I actually could not do in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom. Because, for example, if I have a question from a student in the back of the classroom, I'm looking this way. In the front, now I'm looking here. So uh, when I'm speaking to students in a traditional classroom, I'm at, I, I, for a moment, disengage in order to interact with other students who have questions. But in this environment, no matter who I'm speaking to, I'm looking at you all. And that actually does have an effect because despite having that raise hand button in the platform, what we have found continuously is that students are just naturally raising their hands. And the instructor can see them and call on them. So if you can imagine how this works in the mind, this connection, there's a student connected via their laptop, wherever they are, taking a live lecture, 10,000 kilometers away, and they're raising their hand. Oh, 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 professor, me, me, me. So we've recreated that experience, both through the technology and in the mind of the students. Now, just to reiterate the student experience, um, students can log into their laptops and arrange Zoom in this format. Because we have multiple tools, for example, the, uh, the interactive whiteboard that I mentioned before, Sketch, we're able to support multiple screens as well. So here, the, uh, the student would be able to uh, log into Zoom, see the instructor, see the slides, and as well um, interact with the interactive whiteboard or the uh, learning management system. So again, that increases the engagement of the student. They never have to disengage from the lecture in order to participate in the lecture, act, uh, lecture actively. All right, now, 
one of the parts I really enjoy, <laughs> the active learning through uh, interactive content and uh, engagement opportunities. So what does this mean? So uh, built into our live lecture experience at regular intervals based on research, between seven to 12 minutes, there are opportunities for students to be actively engaged and ask questions and, and, uh, and interact with their instructors. We have a number of tools that we use in order to do this, but we don't want students to just passively uh, sit there listening to the instructor as you have to me for roughly the last few minutes. So now it's time to do something uh, active and engaging. And two of those tools I'm gonna share with you now are the poll and short answer questions. So let me show you what that is. Here is a poll question that I'm gonna read out to you. When do you feel least comfortable using English? Now, the view that you're seeing here is the instructor's view, all right? And I'm also able to share with you the student's view here. So in the studio, when I click the run button here, it naturally populates on the screen for the student. The student would be able to make a selection. Let's try writing essays for school and click submit. Now, here in the studio, the instructor is able to see the number of responses as they come in. But poll questions are anonymous, all right? And of course, in an actual class, they would be more uh, engaging and more difficult than this question. But they're anonymous because we want to encourage students to learn, perhaps even though they make mistakes. And it allows the instructor to take a snapshot of uh, student comprehension levels at any moment during the live lecture. Are they getting the materials? Is there anything I need to dive into uh, more deeply? And so an instructor can then hit end, and there's uh, an infograph that pops up that allows the instructor to uh, see the level of engagement of understanding, and then this serves as a springboard for deeper discussion. Okay. <laughs> Going to a party. All right. All right, I think that would be the best part of using English. All right, so let's go here to another tool, uh, the short answer question. Here, what is the hardest thing and what is the easiest thing about learning English? Again, um, if I were to share the student screen with you, once I hit run, this populates in the student screen. The student is able to type in an answer and uh, the student can submit um, other files, for example, pictures or anything that supports their answers. They're able to upload files and they're able to select participants here. Uh, this would be a drop down list for other students in their course. Uh, they, these are used as pair or group work discussion activities and then click the submit button here, okay? And here in the studio, the instructor not only can see the answers as they come in, they populate, but the instructor can choose to see or show the students' names as well. And by ending this, then the instructor can uh, expand on the answers and use that again as a springboard for discussion. Uh, the double meaning of words, ooh, ooh, a little double entendre. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see, um, the easiest, speaking, the hardest, slang. All right, so uh, these are just a number of examples of the tools that we have at hand uh, to uh, actively engage students. So of course, in an engineering course, these would uh, be you know, more robust questions asking about the curriculum. But I, again, um, in the spirit of engagement and interactivity, students not only have the ability to raise hand whenever they have questions, the instructor has the ability to actively select students at any time, but built into the curriculum, at least every seven minutes, there's an opportunity for the instructor to measure student learning as that live lecture progresses. So over a 90 minute course, there's a, quite a number of opportunities for the instructor to engage with students. All right, another tool that I want to share again, one that I mentioned before is our sketch, our interactive whiteboard. So again, this technology connects uh, the instructor to students, no matter where they are in the world, it works like pretty much every smart board. But uh, when engaging students, let's see here, if I were to, let's see, 
tried to play a game of tic-tac-toe here with a volunteer who was connected as a student, Hank, who's uh, very far away. Uh, let's see, I'd say, Hank, let's play a game of tic-tac-toe here. All right, you win. All right. As you can see, Hank is playing American style. <laughs> the whole board is mine. All right, so again, uh, this tool um, is used to connect students no matter where they are. Uh, instructors put on uh, algorithmic equations and uh, solutions here and they can actively engage students. So again, this ensures that students are doing their homework and assignments because an instructor can call on them at any time and tell them, come up to the board and solve this. Oh my gosh. So to reiterate, we're focusing on student experiences here and what we've done with the technology to recreate this. Uh, slides with notes and annotations, poll questions that are anonymous that encourage students to just give it a try, learn by trying and even learn by making mistakes. Short answer questions that are used as pair or group work activities and discussions. Interactive whiteboard, uh, connected devices here, laptops, tablets, mobile phones, we're able to share video. For example, uh, students in China, we would be able to share with them uh, YouTube videos or any other uh, videos, library content directly from the studio over the platform to them. Document cameras, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Student presentations, which actually was an example of uh, what Alex did earlier. Uh, students are able to share on the channel and they have their uh, cameras and they're speaking clearly and they're, that's being broadcast to everyone. And through the platform or third-party apps, students are also able to engage and challenge students on the notions that they uh, present. We're able to have a guest in studio, of course. If there's a colleague that wants, uh, that's able to uh, uh, serve as a a uh, content area specialist, uh, an instructor, you can invite them in and have them speak to your students. And quizzes and exams. There's no escaping uh, this bane <laughs> of student existence. Um, uh, either through the platform or through other uh, means, we are able to deliver quizzes and exams to students no matter where they are in the world. There's no escaping that. So this is what I've been able to share with you in just this brief moment. Um, I hope that uh, you, you, know, you, you like what you saw and perhaps you have some questions. Uh, I am available to answer uh, a few questions for you as well as Alex. So um, if you do have questions, you can type them into the group chat. And if you feel a little bit braver, you can even unmute yourself and speak up and we'll see you nice and clearly.